right, guys, how you doing? This is William Myers from Mass Outdoors. Today we're going to show you how to make a birch bark container. Be right back. All right, so when I get birch bark off a tree, I try to make it as thick as possible when I'm removing it from the tree. And then what I can do is one sheet of bark that I take off, I can select two or three layers from that, and then I can peel that away, thus making that bark go just that much further. And I can make a container out of this. It's uh, pretty flimsy though, but the sheet right here is probably four or five thick, and that's really what I'm looking for. You know, it's still going to fold without snapping in half. See, that's the fold, and it's still watertight, um, and, and it's going to be a little bit thicker, more hardier. <clears throat> so, just wanted to show you guys that how to process that out real quick, and uh, you know, just because you uh, take one section off of the tree off doesn't mean that you have to make tanner out of that, plus it would probably be about that thick anyway, it's pretty difficult to work with. So we're going to go ahead and show you guys what I do, and um, these are just pieces of fencing, and what I, I use these for uh, stretching small um, small hides and things like that, and like bigger things like possums and things, I'll actually put two or three of these together, and you know I don't have to cut and make them. You know I just go out to my local hardware store, and they're relatively cheap actually. So that's what these are, and what I'm using them for is to cut on, and a straight edge, relatively straight edge. These don't need to be, you know, absolutely perfect. That's just a, a guideline for me so I get a, a decently straight edge. Doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. Just needs to get the job done. And I really would like to try to separate this without creating more separations, but looks like I've already created two of them. No big deal. All right, so we're going to get this border off of here, and we'll be right back with you. All right, guys, so this is the piece of birch bark that we're going to be using here. And I've tried to make this as square as possible, but <clears throat> what we're going to start out doing is folding this directly in half, just like this. <clears throat> they call this stuff paper bark for a reason. This stuff folds up really, really, really good. <clears throat> and we got a crack in it already, but it's only on one level. So once we found the middle right here, we're going to take our first side right here and we're going to fold that past the middle about an inch so if right here's the middle we're going to fold that about an inch past the middle just like that trying to keep everything as even as possible and just kind of try to use kid gloves with this stuff you don't want it breaking through completely and we got a couple knot holes in here but that's nothing we can't take care of with uh, some pine resin so we'll uh, probably show that as well if not into a part two so we've got that fold in so now what we're going to do is we're going to fold this back until it meets the middle so right here is that middle crease and we're going to fold this back just like this it's a little bit past the middle but I got a knot that I'm trying to contend with here I don't want to snap it just like that and then we can turn it around We can make sure that folds pretty tight. And then we're going to do the same exact thing on this side as well. But with this one, it's a little bit easier because we can just come right to this edge right here. And this is what's going to make everything nice and even for us. You hear those snapping and popping and cracking. Um, hopefully that's not all the layers of the birch bark. There are several layers in here. One or two snapping and popping isn't going to bother me very much. And then fold that back just like that. No problem, no problem. And that's what we're left with right there. That's the start of our box. So we're going to come and put it vertical to us. And then go to each of the four corners. And we're going to fold them in just like this. And this is where you really, really got to be careful. You don't want to snap all these layers that are in here. But you want a good, tight line on that.
All right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fold all four corners and we'll get right back to you. All right, guys, so this is what we want right here. Trying to make it as even as possible, but, I mean, this isn't an exact science. And these flaps that we made, we're just going to tuck them right over those corners, just like that. And now we're going to actually pick up our box, and this is how it's going to form, just like this. Just start picking up the middle and push down on the bottom, just like this. And be very careful not to snap this thing because then you'll be very angry. All right, so here, where the flaps are folded, that's where our corners are. You just kinda wanna, like I said, use kid gloves and, and give those a slow press, getting your corners made just like that. And you see we got a, a pop right there. That is not a big deal. We'll make this thing watertight with some pine resin. Not a big deal at all. And you see things like that, and just keep moving, keep moving on. We'll fix that in the end. All right, let's go to our second corner here. Turn that. See, if you go slow and you be really careful, you'll start to feel the pops and the cracks, and that's where you know where you got to be careful at. All right, so once we're done with those two corners, we can work on the bottom. And we can just slowly work in the bottom and get a crease going where we want our bottom to be on this side. doesn't really help that it's cold out that's that's one reason why this is popping and cracking as bad as it is on me but I don't let it affect me I just keep going There's plenty of pine resin out there guys now what I'm doing right now is I'm working on the other side the reverse side now the bottom and we'll be able to see what we got and what we need to fix here in about two seconds. So as you can see, this is the start of our birch bar container right now. But as you can see, these two sides are drawing out. What I'm going to do is pull these sides up and then put a stiff piece of bark right underneath that lip. That's what that lip is for. And I'll show you that in about one second. All right, so all we really have to do is just kind of eyeball this. And we're going to have to take just a little bit off. Like I said, this isn't an exact science. So if we kind of cut a straight enough line as we can on this really stiff piece of bark right here, it'll give us what we need. We're just going to slide that right underneath that flap just like this and that'll bring in the sides there kind of get a, a tighter line on this and you see this the, that side's already brought in let's do one more for the other side Okay, so we caught our second piece here of that really thick bark. This stuff's really a lot thinner compared to this. This is just to, to stabilize that corner. We're just going to throw it right underneath of that lip right there. And that is going to serve us two purposes. One, you see it brings in the sides, makes our, our box more square. And, and two, we could take it all and we could punch a hole into those two sides where the, the bark is thicker. And we could run some cordage there and we could make something that we could uh, hold on to either that or put around our neck like this that way we can collect like berries or whatever what we're doing uh, wild edibles and we could have our hands free to be collecting which is a lot more convenient like especially if you know like collecting autumn olive or something like that and having something around your neck and just being able to use both hands to collect those uh, just makes things go a lot quicker and we're going to show you how to seal this up right now because this isn't watertight it's not going to hold water as it is right now we busted a couple holes in it so hang on all right, so what I got here is a can of Sterno, and uh, the really cool thing about this is this is what goes around my 40-ounce uh, clean canteen uh, stainless steel water bottle, 
and it's from the Pathfinder School. It's a stove top, <clears throat> and you know it's really convenient, especially in places where you're not allowed to have fire. I go to a couple places where they would appreciate it if you didn't build a fire everywhere in the woods, and you know you really got to respect the landowners in that. Uh, so this way, I still can boil water and things like that. But this can of Sterno, and this uh, this grill top can just go in the fire. And that gets my water bottle or my cup up above the coals, and it really speeds up the process of uh, boiling water or cooking or whatever. But it, it serves dual purposes as well because <clears throat> I can attach it to the top of this sterno right here. And uh, like that, uh, it's kind of hard to see. Just kind of make sure that it's going. I thought it was for a second. It was. There we go. And the wind blew it out. <laughs> Wind's blowing it out? Yeah. Oh no, it's still going. Oh. Yep. It's hard to see that alcohol flame. So you really gotta be careful. And I got some pine resin here. And we're gonna kinda dump this out because we don't need all this stuff right here. We're just gonna take one nice little hunk here, throw it in there, and then throw it on top of that stove right there. Let that melt. And uh, as soon as that does, we'll get right back to you. Okay, as you can see inside the container here, we got several holes, plus we have a couple cracks that we're going to be sealing up. Let's go ahead and pay attention <coughs> to this one right here first. So I'm going to take as much resin as I can here, and I'm making sure that this doesn't actually go to the point of crystallization. And I'm just kind of coating that hole with that there. And that's going to make that watertight. Make sure that nothing's going to be able to get out of there. <clears throat> and you can see a couple pinholes in there. I'm going to pay attention to them a little bit. And once this stuff dries, <clears throat> it's going to uh, be real permanent. It's not going to go anywhere. And we'll uh, address those corners there. That's going to take a lot of pitch in there. I'm sorry, resin. This isn't pitch yet. start globbing it in those corners right there until you get a nice seal there you go and then we got one more to take care of then we can start closing this up on the sides as well you know whenever you're working with a natural material like this you're always going to have these variables you know, something's going to snap, something's going to bust on you, and you're going to have to be prepared to take care of those problems. And pine resin is pretty much a fix-all in my book. Get those hairs out of there. All right, so we got another hole. Right there. Oh, okay. Where? I don't see it. Little tiny one in the corner. <laughs> a little tiny one in the corner, okay. Right there? No. Towards you a little bit. Oh, well, I, I see another one right here anyway, so go ahead and take care of that while we're at it. Like the line right above where you just put that. <clears throat> oh, I see what you're talking about. Thanks. I didn't see it. <laughs> Did not catch that one. All right, so that boy is waterproof right now. We're going to let this cool down a little bit but right now let's go ahead and start sealing up these corners here where we didn't we had a couple busts I'm just making it now I mean this is just aesthetic I'm kind of just making it look better for my reasons it doesn't actually I don't have to do this You know, if you ever get too much on there, all you do is just lightly take your uh, take your knife and just kind of it'll be like hard candy at that point. You just kind of scrape it and it'll just bust up. Okay, guys, there we go. Let's go ahead and put that, attach that down as much as we can there.
see that knot hole is, it's not going to split, it's not going to seal as much as I'd like it to. Let's use some pine resin to close all this up. <clears throat> Alright, flip her over and pay attention to the other side here. Now it puts tins hot. See how quickly that cools down all those strings and hairs it looks like I hopefully you can see that on camera it's because how cold it is out here as soon as you expose that off the fire it pretty much cools down there's a piece of bark in there no big deal There we go. All right, so there we go. There's our uh, birch bark container. Really easy project. No fuss, no muss. You know, and uh, this is one of them that I had to actually pay attention to uh, some of the cracks that we did in there. I've done plenty of these where they just fold right up and you don't have to put anything in them. They just are watertight as it is. But when things happen, you know, you, you've got to be prepared to fix them. Alright guys, well, this has been William Myers with Mass Outdoors. Hope you liked this video, and if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you click subscribe. Liking my video really helps me out a lot. I appreciate all your comments and support. Hopefully, we'll see you out in the woods. This is William Myers with Man <laughs> Mana Mana Mana. Well, this is William Myers with Manus Outdoors. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you click the subscribe button. The like video down below really helps me out a lot. <laughs> the like video. <laughs> like, like of the video. All right, I gotta do this yeah. quickly. Uh huh.